Disney Continental X X X X X X X X X X X X X Okay. Uh, I hope that for question 3, A, C, D should not be an issue. Is there any problems doing A, C, and D? Do we check answer? Okay, for part D, uh, there are many layers to the sign to power 5, then 2x. Okay, so take note that you bring down the power itself, the power rule, you bring down 5. Okay, then after that, it becomes a 4 over here. Okay, then after that, you need to differentiate the insides of the bracket, so therefore you get your 2. So the differentiation of inside. And then after that, uh, the sign itself, when you differentiate, okay, it will become a sign. Right, so that's how uh, it is supposed to be differentiated. Right, yes. Can I write the 4 outside bracket? Write the 4 outside bracket. So you can, uh, alternatively, your sign for bracket 2x, you can write it in this manner. But you cannot write it in this manner. Okay. Alright. This and this are equivalent, but this and this is not equivalent. Because this means that the power of 4 is only for 2x. Okay, so please uh, take note of how you write your trigonometry. Yes. You cannot put the sin 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 to the power sin 4 bracket 2x mm -hmm. equals to sin 2x bracket than sin 4, right? So you must have a bracket in between, right? Yes, so this one is correct. Uh, yeah, this one is not correct. The difference let me write it again. Okay? So this is equivalent like this. But this and this is not easy. Okay, so please be very careful about it. Because of uh, okay. yeah. put just sign to actually not the bracket. Like you remove the Oh like that, huh? Yeah. Okay. Then it's wrong, right? Because you are just signing the two. Uh you and can uh you can you can put without brackets, it's fine. Yeah, but looks awkward. But that also can. Okay. Yeah. But usually it's a function, ma. Yeah. Just put brackets. So. Like f x, you don't put f x only, right? So like if you don't put the bracket, then you don't have to. Uh huh. Differentiate it up, right? It will be assumed if you write sine two x. Definitely, we know that two x will belong to the sine. The 2x is the angle itself. Also, oh, it's still need to differentiate. Yes, of course. Yeah. Definitely, when you write sine 2x like that, okay, you will see that 2x is the angle for the sine. Yeah. It is not sine 2 times x. No, this doesn't make sense. Okay. Alright, any questions? Okay. If not, uh, we will move on to try 5. Okay. So, we have understood how to do differentiation of the trigo functions already. We will look at the different applications that we have learned. For example, your rate of correct uh, your connected rates of change and then your maximum minimum equations of tangent and normals and all that. Okay, so it is given that uh, t is equal to sine x and that x and that x varies with the time t, so x and t are variables. Okay, we want to first show that dx over dt will be 1 over cosine x. And then in part 2, we want to find the rate of change. Of x when x is equal to pi over 3. Okay, so to differentiate the function given, Okay, so since you're looking at dx over dt, right? Okay, but in this case, we have given uh, t equals to sine x. Okay, so in this case, it doesn't make sense for us to go and change the subject into x equals to sine inverse t. Okay, because we do not have the competency to differentiate sine inverse, cosine inverse, tangent inverse. So we cannot do it in this way. Okay, although in algebra, some of you like to actually change the subject. Okay, and then after that differentiate. But in this case, it doesn't help us very much when we want to change the subject. Okay, so we need to actually just go ahead to differentiate this. So dt over dx, that will give you cosine x. Okay, so then after that we have already understood that dx over dt 
will be 1 over cosine x. change of x when x equals to pi over 3. So that means that we want to find out what is dx over dt. Okay, wait, this one is not connected with some change. So to find out what is dx over dt when x equals to pi over 3, you just have to substitute in the value. In this case, make sure you press in radian mode because this is clearly in radians. So therefore, answer. Okay. Okay, the units in this case will be two radians per second. Because x is in radians, okay? The x given to you is pi over 3, which is in radians. Point. Okay, so uh, so that's why in this question they say that the curve itself has a stationary point. So the subject you're looking at is the curve. Whereas unlike to the other time whereby we were very confused about the other question about the gradient of the normal. Okay, so this one looking at curve itself only stationary point. So we first differentiate this. And then since you're looking at stationary point, the derivative will be equal to zero. How do we actually go about solving this? It's all your trigo coming back. Uh. Okay. So, I mean, everything to positive. Then what? Oh, R formula. Where do we use R formula? We use R formula when there is both sine and cosine. But this value over here is non zero. Remember that? Okay. This must be non-zero, then it is advisable for us to use R formula. Otherwise, we will just divide the whole equation by cosine. So tangent x plus 2 equals cosine. Okay, divide throughout by cosine x. Okay. Then you get what? Cosine over sine. Then cotangent. Can you solve cotangent? Alright. So Okay. Then tangent x plus 2 is equal to 0, so therefore tangent x equals to negative 2. How to solve? Uh, tangent inverse. Yeah. Tangent inverse. Oh, we need our ASTC first, right? Identify our angle. Where is it? So negative is second and fourth quadrant, right? So oh your basic God. angle equals to? Huh? So, so we actually need to do this. Ha. Yes! What's it learned last year for what? To forget. <laughs> it should be in radian mode, right? Yes, in radian mode. Okay, press in radian mode. You will get your basic angle to be 1.107 there about, right? Because it's in the Because this is value. Oh, eh, wait, uh. oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, oh, because in part one, they say find the 
value of x where x is from 0 to pi. Sorry, I missed out on that point. Zero to pi is the fourth quadrant only. Okay, yes. So therefore, but we need to first find out what is the basic angle, right? So tangent inverse two, that will be one point one zero seven one. Okay. Then after that, we look for the quadrants. So second quadrant, that will be what? What's the second quadrant value? Angle. High 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 minus basic angle. Pi minus one point one zero seven one. So that will be. 2.03 3SF. Okay, uh, you could consider the fourth quadrant, but then in the end, you still have to actually uh, reject it. So that will give you 5.18. Okay, so that of this stationary point. Okay, so we, what do we need to do to determine the nature? Uh, we do second derivative, right? Can I go and think about it? I forgot at this point. Yeah. 
the my focus is on teaching you differentiation. Okay. Yeah, but then uh, it will not give you equals to zero. It cannot be such that this and this, when this equals to zero, then after that it will cause you to let this also be equals to zero. Yeah, right? This one 90 degrees, then this one 90 degrees. If this is 90, then it will be uh, 1, right? Then 1 cannot be equals to zero. Right? So definitely, yeah. So the answer is actually simply, there is no value x such that both of it will allow you to be able to get the equation to be equals to zero, right? Because if this 90, then down here 90, this will be 1, then it doesn't equal to zero. So because the equation is equal to zero, mm. so x will never be equal to zero. Yes, correct. Yeah. It will never be able to prove. That's why we can conveniently divide by cosine x. Okay, unlike unlike how we do our usual algebra, okay. I know why why you ask this question. It's because usually when we do our algebra, I always tell you cannot divide by a variable. Right? Okay, I cannot divide by suddenly maybe x times maybe x plus three equals to zero. Okay, then you cannot just solve and then dummy x is only equals to negative 3. Correct? Okay, you cannot divide conveniently x over and then after you can only get one answer x equals to negative 3. Whereby when there is actually another possibility that x is equals to 0. Okay? So, uh, in this case, okay, there is that possibility that x is equals to 0. So that's why you cannot divide x over. But whereas in this case, okay, uh, the function itself all right, will not allow you such that when you divide across by this variable, this still remains as a variable function, okay, uh, then after that, it will allow you to be able to get a zero, uh, to be equal to a zero here. Okay? So there is no such possibility. That's why we can actually do this. Right? Okay. Any questions?